Hi, and welcome to Theater Thursdays. I'm David Alley, and I am here in January to talk to you about our production at the Clarence Brown Theater of Around the World in 80 Days. My guest is Aaron Orlov. Hi, Aaron. Hi, David. How are you? Again, I'm David Alley. And I am a senior lecturer for the Department of Theater and also a resident company member for over 20 seasons for the Clarence Brown Theater, both of which are situated in Knoxville, Tennessee, which is the native land of the Yuchi and Muscogee Creek people, as well as the Cherokee nations. Aaron, in this production, I played Detective Fix and you played... I played the Frenchman Passepartout, servant to Phileas Fogg a very iconic character. You know, uh, as I was thinking about this particular production uh, in preparation for this, uh, one of the biggest memories that came back to me uh, was a lot of fun that we had, um, all of us as a cast, but you and I had a number of scenes together and there was one moment in my mind that tended to stick out more than any other moment that we shared on stage. Would you care to maybe guess what that is? Oh yeah, I can guess and elaborate. It was the time I put you in theater purgatory. <laughs> Indeed, um, yeah. I, I still am apologetic for that to this day, but basically what happened was we had an insane show, many costume changes, set changes. It is around the world in 80 days. And so there was a lot of stuff going on stage as well as backstage. I, one night, am waiting in the wing, waiting to go on for what I thought was the scene that I was supposed to go on for. And uh, very quickly, I learned, uh, as people were yelling at me from backstage to go on stage, that I was in the wrong place. They kept yelling at me, and I yelled back. I said, no, 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 this is where I'm supposed to be. The scene is coming up. They kept yelling at me, go, 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 it's your turn. And finally, it clicked, and I was able to release you from your theater limbo. I very sorry. Yeah, yeah, no, no, it's quite all right. It was only 10 or 15 seconds. And, you know, in all honesty, it felt like an hour to me, but <laughs> uh, but no, it's okay. And, you know, completely understandable because uh, backstage, you know, as you mentioned, everything was, it was mayhem back there. Uh, and it, it was a challenge to really keep up with where we were at any given moment because everything was always moving so quickly. Um, you know, I, I think part of the fun started uh, for us uh, in 2017, in January, actually at the end of 2016, December, we all traveled, uh, myself along with your graduate class, over to London, and we got to work together over there. Um, you guys were working with Barbara Hausman, one of the leading voice teachers in the world, um, and also uh, did some clown work with a woman by the name of Carol Thompson. Um, uh, you have also done some work with not only Christopher Tramontana, who is a graduate of the 2008 MFA class here at UT, but also Chris Bays, uh, who is one of the leading clown teachers here in uh, this country. Could you talk a little bit about the work that you did with them, and then maybe talk a little bit about how you incorporated some of that clown work and your training uh, into your creation of the character of Passport 2? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, this training was absolutely vital to the process of finding Passepartout. Uh, in Clown, uh, day one, you are thrown into the fire. Uh, you are told to be funny and you are put in these situations where you really have to let yourself go and um, find and work and, and see what's thrown at you and really listen and and learn to listen uh, because that was the the gist of the work is you have to take yourself out of it and and be ready to fail and so uh when i went through that training with barbara with carol with both chris's uh, i felt very prepared to go into the room for 80 days um and and start working and finding things Fantastic. Yeah. So um, I, I know that it must have been a challenge, particularly with the dialect work that you had to do because you had to speak with a French accent. Can you talk a little bit about how you uh, prepared for that and what were some of the challenges and surprises uh, with working with that accent? 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, so uh, the the moment that our fearless leader, uh, Kate Buckley, uh, the director of the show, uh, had told me that I had got the part of Passport Two, uh, that same day I I dove into every French text I could find. I started watching um, French films. Um, I I downloaded Duolingo on my phone and started working on it. Uh, because I wanted to make sure that I I would nail this accent and that it would be second nature when it came to uh, and finding things in the room to play with physically. Um, several other things helped was that uh, my wonderful classmates, Jeff, uh, who speaks French, uh, Jude and Carlen, they speak Creole. So when I was, uh, you know, working on the dialect, you know, out loud, on our downtime, uh, uh, you know, they were very helpful and, and vital in helping me find what worked and didn't work. And and finally, um, Terry Weber, who was the dialect coach for the production when production started, um, he had worked with me uh, one-on-one a lot to find uh, exactly the accent that we wanted, which vowels we wanted to keep and not keep. And, um, one of the uh, things that we wanted to make sure was being able to project to an audience of 500 people a night a a clear and distinct French accent. Um, I remember one of the challenges that I really wanted to work on was um, the R's in French. Uh, Some folks have um, a clear R and it's a harder R, but we wanted to do a soft, uh, almost invisible uh, to the ear R. So working on that sound uh, for a year prior with those different folks just really, really helped in um, making the process as smooth as possible. Fascinating. Yeah, really hard to find the balance between authenticity with the accent and clarity for the audience. Uh, Not an easy thing to do. Um, So Passepartout is a fairly iconic character. A lot of people who know the story uh, are familiar with his character. Um, A little larger than life, actually, even in the novel. So what were some of the tools that you used to make the character your own as you went through the process? Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, I remember during the talkback of the production, um, someone had asked me if I had uh, used the book, the, the original novel, as reference. Um, and I, I didn't, actually. I read the book, but I didn't use it as reference for the character. And the reason for that is because I wanted to um, see what everyone in the ensemble was bringing to uh, the room. And I wanted to play with our ensemble and and find what worked uh, with Detective Fix and with Phileas Fogg. Um, I didn't want there to be any outside resources telling me that, oh, you have to do this when this situation happens or not. I I really wanted it to be our own um, production. Super. So really kind of sticking to the story that we were telling with this particular adaptation uh, of the story. Um, Super. Yeah, we had a lot of fun. This is one of the most memorable productions uh, for me personally um, in getting to work with uh, almost just an entire single class of MFA actors. Uh, And I, I think we all walked away from that having had a ton of fun throughout. Um, so fill us in on where you are now and um, what you're up to these days. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I am living in my uh, hometown of Queens, New York right now with my beautiful wife, Jessica, and uh, our lovely son, Desmond. And I'm speaking to you right now from the native land of the Lenape people. And I think to your surprise and perhaps anyone who's uh, listening to this right now, um, I've actually been applying to uh, nursing programs for the past year. Um, I know that the uh, pandemic has been uh, an, an insane roller coaster for many people throughout this country and this world. And um, when it hit, I saw it as a sort of call to action for myself. And uh, so I want to do my part in helping to heal the world. Fantastic. That's amazing. Have you gotten in? Yes, I have. I'm waiting for a few more schools, but uh, I have gotten into a program so far. So I'm set to go this spring. 
Fantastic. Congratulations. And thank you for that. I mean, that's a really huge thing, uh, particularly in this time when the world is in dire, dire need of, of nurses and uh, for, for wanting to put yourself out there uh, to help out. Amazing. Just a testament to uh, the wonderful person that you are, Aaron. Um, it's great to see you. Uh, it, it's, I've, I've missed being around you guys. <laughs> you don't know how when you guys move on, we, we, we have a tendency to miss you. <laughs> And it's the same for us. We we do uh, miss being in that room, and I hope that one day we are able to again and work on something again. It was oh, okay. the highlights of my time in Super. Tennessee. Me too. Well, thanks for being with us today, Aaron. Absolutely. Thank you, David. Thank you for having me. You bet. And thanks to the rest of you for joining us for this edition of Theater Thursdays. Please tune in next Thursday when we will discuss more about the Clarence Brown Theater's production of Around the World in 80 Days.